I'm Mike Maxwell, and welcome to the A1 Multimedia Magic Video Series. Today we showcase the talents of Mr. Larry Becker. Larry Becker is an internationally acclaimed mentalist, inventor, and author. He is the winner of the prestigious Mentalist of the Year Award and recipient of the Psychic Entertainer Association's Achievement Award for his outstanding contributions to the art of mentalism. To put his contributions into perspective, Larry Becker is to mentalism what Di Vernon was to close-up magic. To connoisseurs of mentalism, the name Larry Becker on an effect is as prized as his Rembrandt on a painting or Rolex on a watch. On this videotape, Larry Becker will share with you the outstanding mental miracles that have gained him a worldwide reputation. It is with great pleasure that I give you Larry Becker. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. What you're about to see is a demonstration of my ability to use the five senses to create the illusion of a six. A sixth sense that will apparently enable me to tune in on your thoughts, to read your minds, and perhaps even to control what you say and do. In other words, I'm going to attempt to make the impossible possible. It's my job. <laughs> But first, I'll need the assistance of this lovely lady sitting right here. Let's give her a nice round of applause. And your name is? Donna. Donna. Donna, one of my favorite authors, uh, was a gentleman by the name of H.G. Wells. I'm sure you're familiar with him. And one of the stories that I love the most was called The Time Machine. And today, I'd like to reenact something from the time machine with your help. Now, since H.G. Wells is no longer here, I'm going to use a copper British penny to represent Mr. Wells. So that you'll recognize that, I'm showing it to you. Good. The time machine is going to be your hands. So I want you to cup your hands sort of like this, and that will be the time machine. This is the machine in which we will send the coin on its travel back in time to the 16th century. I'll place it right in here. And may I use your glass for a minute? Just so that you know it's there. And somewhere here I have a little label. Ah, would you uh, peel the backing off of that and we'll seal the envelope. And we'll put the little label on here because I want you to pick a year in the 16th century. Any year from, uh, what is that? With a 16th in front of it. Uh, <laughs> and write that year on the label on the other side. We're ready. The time machine is revving up. We're about to make our journey back in time. Are you ready for this, Donna? I think so. I hope so. May I have the envelope, please? I just want you to place it in your hands, like this. Ready. Here we go. Imagine now. Imagine a calendar. The pages are being ripped from the calendar. It's going back through the 1900s, the 1800s, 1700s, 1600s. It's way back there. Did you feel anything unusual happening during that entire procedure? Be honest. No. It's a very smooth time machine. It <laughs> does not make a lot of noise or vibration. May I have it, please? I'm going to tear it in half, and we'll use a little glass here. Would you hold the glass up, please? And I'll empty that copper coin right in here. That isn't a copper coin, is it? No, no. It's As not. a matter of fact, that is a pirate coin, a silver coin, actually minted in 1631, right there. And <laughs> you have witnessed an actual example of time travel. We started with the copper coin. We end up with a 1631 
silver piece of eight. And for the first time, Donna, what year did you write on the envelope? 1631. 1630. Wow. Thank you so much. That was delightful. Thank you, Donna. That, that is incredible. Oh, terrific. You did that so great. Uh, has anybody ever had an out-of-body experience? They really are fun. You've never had one? Would someone like to have an out-of-body experience? <laughs> would, would you like to have one? Sure. Well, I'll come right up here. Let's give a nice round of applause. <laughs> Step right over here. Sir. Now, for your out-of-body experience, we're going to use a pack of playing cards. And we use those because, very simply, and remember, the cards are sitting right here, because they offer us 52 separate and distinct personalities. Okay. And you can easily visualize them. I want you to confirm the fact, are the cards all different from one another? Yes. Are they all well mixed? Yes. Your job is very simple. All I'm going to ask you to do is to give the deck a complete cut. Did you see how I did that? Mm -hmm. No practice required. Just like this. Give it a cut, and that's all you have. Not yet. OK. <laughs> I like doing this. <laughs> Just like that. Okay. Is that fair enough? Okay. Good. OK. Now. Are you, do you play cards often? Every once in a while, yeah. Okay, tell, tell you what you do. Hold the cards, get ready. I'm going to step way over here. Would you move back just a little bit? And I'll place the, uh, the box right over here. I want you to give those cards a single complete cut. Okay. Take the top card, don't look at it, and place it in your pocket. I'll turn away as you're doing that. Do not look at the card. Okay. You've done that. I want you to slide those cards back into that box carefully and then insert the flap in the box. Pick up the box and hold it up in there so that uh, you can see the light behind it. Can you see through the box? No. Turn the box around. Look again. Can you see through the box? No. The box is impenetrable. It is opaque. We're going to do more than that. We're actually going to take place rubber bands around this box in both directions. Do you know in which pocket you place the yes. That's important. Here we go. In fact, why don't you hold your hand out? We'll place the cards right here. Place your other hand on top. This makes the body experience much more difficult. Are you ready? I, ladies and gentlemen, am going to conduct an out-of-body experience. I am literally going to project my consciousness into that box, and I'm going to determine the identity of the card in that gentleman's pocket, believe it or not. I will do it right now. Ready? Here I go. Oh, once I get inside the box, in order to determine which card is in his pocket, I count all the cards rather rapidly. And then once I've determined whether it is a red or a black card that is missing, I have to count that particular suit of cards. And then I subtract that number from the number one. That will tell me the value of the card in someone's pocket. Believe it or not, I am going to do all of this by the time I counted to five. Now, practice once. One, come on. One, two, three, four, five. Very good. When I get a signal, count to five, I will attempt to go in and do all of that complicated smash. Uh, in the count of five. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Six. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm serious. I, I believe you can put the cards down. Okay. I believe, sir, that the card in your pocket, believe it or not, is the four of clubs. Now, would you agree that if that card is, in fact, the four of clubs, that you have just witnessed a minor miracle? Yeah. Yes. Would you believe in out-of-body experiences? Of course you would. Very slowly remove the card from your pocket. Do not show it to anyone and hand it to me, sir. Would you believe the four clubs? Thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed that.
Thank you. Thank you. That's kind of spooky, but I enjoy that. Most of the time, I go down to Vegas or someplace, you know, nodding some guy's picture in a box of cards. Uh, actually, speaking of Las Vegas, I'm asked as a psychic entertainer whether or not I can actually influence the outcome of the game of chance. I believe that I can, but every time I try, I lose. What I have found out over the years is that while I really can influence the outcome of the game of chance, I can predict it. That's true. You're probably sitting there wondering, well, why aren't you rich? I am. <laughs> I'd like someone to take an imaginary trip to Las Vegas with me, somebody who is in the Las Vegas mood. This gentleman right back here in the garden. Give him a nice round of applause. <laughs> okay, I think we're all... Now, what is your name, sir? John. John. John, you are going to visit a world-famous gambling casino. In order to do we're going to use casino chips. And I have collected almost 50 of them from every major casino, from Atlantic City to Las Vegas, Reno, Tahoe, and uh, perhaps one or two from Monte Carlo. Uh, you all look like a hunch. Anybody here going to Vegas soon? Yeah. Who? Yeah, uh, this. Oh, here. A little souvenir. Got it? Which hotel is that from? The Hilton? The Flamingo? Flamingo Hilton? Yeah. You, all, you have a collector's item there? The Flamingo was the first casino to open in Las Vegas. That's right. And do you know who built the Flamingo Hotel? Who? No, no, no. Warren Beatty. <laughs> no, no. Oh, well, it doesn't make any difference. <laughs> but we have, we have chips here from the MGM, the Desert Inn, the Mirage. Got John, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to take, shake up this uh, container of chips. Look carefully. After you've, you've got them mixed, I want your eyes reach into the container, remove one chip, and place it in coat pocket, your right hand coat pocket. Close your eyes when you, when you pick it up. I don't want you to introduce yourself. Put it in immediately. Don't let anybody see it. John, you now have collected a casino. The only question now is how much money are you going to take? Because we have right here dollars in very money. Remember, this is an imaginary trip, John, we're taking here. So I'm going to ask you to how much you are going to wager and how we're going to do that. Take the uh, envelope in your hand, John. In your eye, I want you to cut off as much as dollars in your life in that seal the floor. That's right. And do that while my back is open. I don't want how many bills you have sealed in the envelope. We'll keep that for a surprise. We'll find out just how important it is. Oh. Put that in your pocket, John, so it's all the way. Well, we finally down moment of truth. Notice this envelope. I you to make a special time. Just say this little envelope, but I haven't taken the content any time. We're going to play a game, and this is what I want you to do. Hold out your hand. I'm going to ask you to look hand one time. You're the dealer. Okay. okay. Deal them down in the in the hand, just like. And any time that you want, you may stop. Any time. Okay. No, I'm kidding. All right. All right. You sat. Should it take this card? Yeah, we'll put it down here. Okay. okay. Now I want you to start dealing cards face up onto this pile. Face up. Okay. And once that you can see every card, there are others. Yeah. That correct. One that you like, you may stop once again. Oh. Okay. This is entirely yours. Right I want you to deal the next card face for that face card. Okay. Have you? 
these two cards right okay. ladies and gentlemen the of truth i have an influence on anything is that correct everything has been on the up and on selected one casino out 50 how much money he was wager and then he finished off by dealing himself in the hand of black and he did that on his own the cards me a favor, would you are believe what man that please? Yeah. John, I ask you to read this aloud before I want you to take out the chip that you selected and hold that in your hand. Okay. Read with me. Larry Becker, predict this date a random select audience volunteer will visit Harris Hotel. Casino, correct? Harris? Come in. Your $30,000 on one hand, a blackjack cap. You have the envelope. Yeah. Would you open it? Ow. What? 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 We got here. <laughs> well, carefully cash bills one at a time out. Okay. Three, four, five, seven, eight, five, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 36. Oh. Really? And win the game. Read this. And game. Score of 20. You have two cards. You show the audience. What is it? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's hear it for John. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. You're too kind. You know, skill that ability to uh, know things in comes in hand at the time. And I've got pretty good at it. Matter of fact, I'm going to attempt something right now. And it, it's an interesting experiment because we're going to take visible cards, and cards one to commit legal art. I'm actually going to ask them to burn all but one card. But you don't worry about it. You don't have to in because this is all going to occur in his mind. As a matter of fact, it's going to occur in this gentleman's mind. Would you mind coming up, sir? You look like a What is your name? Greg. 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 Uh, I'm prepared, and we're exactly as I said. Now I have a prediction. Go. Sit in the wallet. I'm going to play the wallet. As a matter of fact, I'll put it right in your pocket. There. <laughs> yes. Okay, it's only your glasses. We'll leave that in full view of the audience. You can see that at all times. I just want everyone that my wallet. You are now going to do the burning. Ready? Imagine you are holding a deck of two cards. Would you burn the red or the black? Black. Here we go. I'll help. They're going to burn a crisp. Black card. Are 26. Which of the uh, cards would you like to burn? Diamonds. Diamonds. These are gone. He leaves you with 13 cards. Is that correct? I want you to 
those out, sir. I'm going to hand them to you. They're, they're invisible. Spread those cards out. Have you done that? Yes. You don't look like <laughs> I see him. <laughs> you are also, but don't pick up. Leave it there. I'll let you burn this last batch yourself. Do me a favor. Hold him up. Our card. We'll burn. <laughs> In his mind, one card for you dropped it on the first. Would you do me a favor, sir? There's one heart face down. Would you pick that card up and for the first time tell us any of the card? It's a heart. Five of hearts. The hearts, the gentleman. Very good. You in here. Put it in. Okay. Well. Five of hearts. Inside of my wallet is a bill. Oh boy. And a little envelope. I'm going to remove the one card in that. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. It's. Part. Did you notice how wins? I mean, everybody in here. It was only off by one, right? You see, wrote the fiction. I put it on the back of this card. <laughs> I'm going to read what's on the back of you to verify the words that I read. You see it here. I predict that even though your card and mine are the same color and suit, the value. Thank you. Down through the century, many dreamed of someday being able to part the veil of the future and determine tonight you're going to see that. So and lady before certain things. The first thing that I did is I gave a sealed envelope. She had that sealed envelope in her possession the entire time that we never left her. I also take a section of the classified newspaper and to out of the thousands of classified to one and to write her name right of it. Panky. Uh, that is what she selected. I also asked to move a bill from her wallet and to that bill by putting her initial uh, over the introduce the young lady who took time to do those things. Would you please come up? Let's give her a round of applause. And your name? Is Anita. Our right. Anita, you have the envelope. Did it leave your position any time? May I show the audience, please? There it is. I'm going to place it right here in of the little bag in front of the that Armita used. Uh, one thing we can do right now, something to occur right here in of you. The prediction things which happened in the see this part of it right here in front of you. You see, I have a deck of cards. These are a slight case of thyroid, but the less I believe examine them, make sure they 
are. I want you to mix them up anyway. You rather large and ungainly, easy to shuffle. But we have a Crossford here who tried. Perfect. Did it great. I want you just to any one of these out. Good. Right there. All right. I'll leave the right here. This card I will place in along with envelope for the moment of truth. Also, this bill out of your bill folder, and you sign that. Do you have that with you? Is that oh, I'm sorry, I'm just kidding. A one dollar A W, the initials, are those your initials? Yes. Right there on top. April, do you mind come on and help me with this, please? I'm going to place the bill also in there. And I'm going to ask April to hold the bag. Get all that out. You can see that. Ladies and gentlemen, there is your card, gentlemen from which the young lady collected five. You'll notice that very well, yes. Would you, would, would you remove the envelope, please? This is quite interesting. Add that you serve. Would you please confirm that that up there? Here come the glasses. Is that picture? Is that the ad that you and you picked that own will didn't influence you in any way? Would you please open that envelope and the yellow piece? You'll be the. <laughs> No, just like a sheet. Now let's have the young lady over here read. I want you to do it. I want you to read the one down, and we'll see how the great I am came. I predict the classified act ultimately is at forty. Is that exactly what appears in that ad? Thank you. You have that. Oh, uh, don't go away. Don't go away. April, there's more thing in which would you let your dollar bill and uh, signature on the bill. The serial number on your bill is L E one three nine five nine. Is that? <laughs> Let's hear it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very. Haven't used before, sir. Uh, would you mind coming up? We've never met before. We haven't prepared anything between us. No, good. Uh, I'm going to uh, ask you to think a year, month, with the month, the month in which you were born. Now, I we've never met, so there's no way to know that. Is that correct? Sir? Yes. Okay. I'm sure, these cards are all. Good. I'm going to shuffle them. There's three ways to shuffle a deck of cards. You can uh, overhand shuffle like this. 
example which looks like that. There is a and that is the cross. Would you hold your hand out, sir? I want you to take and the complete cut. Thank you. I'm going to deal with you card twelve hand. There's January, February, March, April, May, June, August, October, November, and December. Take those cards and I want you I want you to convert that number to a numerical value. For instance, if you were born in January, that'd be the first month. If you were born in June, next month. And I want you to take cards. The month in which you were born and I want Let me know if you're finished. Have your are you finished? good. Okay. Oh, you have to put the part of the sorry, almost forgot. Okay. Which means I'll have to give the cut. Would you hold out your hand? I'm two, four, five, six, seven, nine. Just hold them in your hand. Because here, I wonder who this is from. It says, I, Larry Becker, predict that this date, a member of the audience born in the month of, subsequently select as it. Where you at month of April? You were. Well, the month of April is signified by the number four. Would you kind of count cards one at a time? One, two, three, four. Would you show it to the audience, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. Happy birthday. It's literary. Uh, April will be kind enough to pass out a few of these books. Have some fun. Words, soul of creation. And we're going to attempt to explore that phenomena right now uh, with several people in the audience. Those who have the paperback books, someone over here. On Gentlemen, let has. Try not to read it. We don't have enough time. But if you would be the exception gentleman of that book, I want you to take and uh, quickly uh, thumb two or three words on pages as where they're all different from one another. Uh, do that as quickly as you can. Just check the every page as you spin through the books. Different from one another because we're going to be different. Place the books close and place them on the table right in front of you. Everybody finished? I said you do not have to read the book, sir. <laughs> uh, I tell you, begin uh, with this. And would you bring your book and just step right up here? I don't want to get out of room. Right there is fine. I ask you, sir, to call. Now, each check the page numbers, make sure they are all different. Are the page numbers different? Good. I want you to call stop anywhere as I'm slowly going to get this book, and I want to show the page stop on to whoever, who else has a book. This gentleman right here and the young lady over here to do that. Would you do that? Right there. You sure you want to sit there? Do you want to go for Look at the page number at the bottom of the page. Yeah. Do you have it? Yeah. Okay. I want you to look at the first page. Yeah. Have it? Okay. Oh, would you find that page number in there? Show her the page 
number. Let her look at the number. Turn to that page in your book, and, and the gentleman over here with the book, would you? Number. Thank you. Turn and the first word on that page. Do you have it? Do you have yours? It must be a funny word. I'm laughing. Okay, close. words in your mind. Please stand, the three people who are concentrating words. Listen to words in your mind. I'm getting, I'm getting the word Bada. Remarkable. Absent. Scott, would you please be seated? Oh. That's great. Remarkable. Here, lady, a book, and I want you to take this. Pay, uh, say bookmark and insert it between any two pages in the. book. Okay. Hey, I want you to look at the turn to the page in your book. Okay. I want you to yourself first paragraph page. Read it. Anyone just read it to yourself, and as you're reading, I'm going to attempt your mind. Try to see whatever is happening with regard to that paragraph. Would you do it one more time? I, I didn't mean to do on the work, but I didn't quite read the first paragraph. Do you have happy uh, some color. It was sort of warm. It was blue, and perhaps flashes of of yellow. And it, it may have been an article. Of, I'm not sure. Wait a minute. I see a young lady, and she's wearing a bright yellow and a pair of name. And she's despondent because she thinks she has suffered a. Please open that page, read that first paragraph. I'll wipe the tears from her eyes. Green and yellow blouse. And with two of my friends, there wasn't much left for anyone else. That was tough. That really was tough. Uh, something a little difficult. You want to use the same book? Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, we'll give you. Your, uh, how's this? There you go. Favor. You speed read. And run wave like down the page. Instead of looking at it, going word by word, you try to get the S of the page and the lines as you follow your finger. Clear? Now, I want you to open that book page that you like. Just open it. Now, this time, we'll go, uh, say the right hand. Top wave like down the page, wave like words as you go past. Good. Oh, stop right there. 
your, your name, a person's name. That person's name is the name Robert. Up down. Find yourself and pick out a on that line. Something over four letters. Make it the long. Do you have a word? In Good. Concentrate on it. Close the book. I'm getting three dash one. See you. <laughs> wow. Uh, oh, you ha you have a dictionary. Yeah. What would you one eight is a and L would mean left hand column would mean the first word on that page. Would you tell me what word are you thinking of? Lumber. What is that first word? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You've been a wonderful audience. explanation for the H.G. Wells time machine. Uh, uh, good trick requires very simple expertise. Uh, a couple of incidentally, you'll notice uh, I use black envelopes. These are not readily available. Custom made for me. It's available from a so and obtain the black envelope in this case is made once again seal as I previously with the scotch tape and the double sided way can just open over and over again you have uh, prepared the and in the back of the envelope I have a small through it, you'll get small It's actually uh, somewhat U-shaped. So it is not a straight horizontal cut, but if, you, if the, uh, you can uh, there is where you place it a quarter inch from the floor of the flap. That is all the preparation needed for the envelope. In the envelope, you your these wrap a from me and uh, uh, enables you to particular effect. I'll explain why in a moment. This is an actual replica of the real McCoy. It is completely you load into the envelope and close it. That's how you begin the performance, and you expect you are experiment in the use of British coin representing H. E. Wells himself, and uh, going to place the coin, the copper, in the machine, which is this envelope. You'll know held with the and. Uh, a position like this, the flap or the split in the right above this portion of the palm, you insert the upper coin in a down and drop onto the palm. You close the envelope. Hand down comfortably. Now tap it against the glass on the table. Question. In fact, you can have several people close by feel. Usually, I have the object which is back left. In I reach in point in the pocket as I do so. If you're seated at the table, you simply keep the roll on your chair, go down. 
copper coin and come up with a label. Because at this point, back in the label, and put it on the back of the envelope. As you do so, you place it directly over the in the label covering that means all the spec any word. You ask that spectator to think the year in the 17th century, any year from 1700 to 1699, and to write that year white because Pope is black and can't write on a book. So she for example, 1642. Tend not to pay any attention to that. Say, are you right-handed? And envelope and have her place her other hand on top. You are now going back in time, back in time to the year which you wrote just a moment ago, a year which you picked out in the second. And it was a feeling thing. You probably say, this is a very quiet journey. Would you separate your please? You take the envelope and tear off the pen. 1642. So you tear off the portion. Empty out the into the spectator's hand, and of course it will be She obviously successfully the journey back in time. And what you do is you repeat that year that she has. You say the year and coin. Sixteen. to some of the intricate carving right, right in front of her, as you say, the year 1942. And you immediately, before she can else, you turn audience and say, ladies and gentlemen, in time to the year 42. Let's give a nice round of applause to a friend here, Robin or whatever, and you go with the coin. There is a date for this coin. Call them verbal deceptions. It is extremely important, very forceful direct. You are showing these people on the court actually believe that you are to point when you put the year 1640 and hold it so that she can see it. Then look, there are so much uh, intricate uh, being on the Well, I'm seeing exactly where it is. Very, very, very Important. So those are the ingredients for the Wells time machine. Uh, I hope it uses it. It's a marvelous illusion. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I had to get into character. This effect that I'm going to explain is called out of automation effort between my good friend. And, left and my put out a series of tricks over the years. Uh, most uh, involved a flap in an envelope, a mirror affixed to one side. And through again, he found the design of an aviator it suited to the creation of a flap uh, as far as he went. Uh, the Way at that point, and I said that it's just stop point here. And I came up with the idea of using rubber band for rubber band, all the difference in the world, and actually created the effect that you previously demonstrated. You'll notice that a rubber band worked the, the aviator one across the, for the belly, one across the lower portion of the box. They are used to create a flat. Flat has been cut. The upper the white 
the red, a perfect line, and across the bottom and down the side. This is right here. Flap of it, he's mylar, which you can see in the back of the flap. That will reflect upward up the bottom card of the deck. That is the secret out of but how do you get that information? And by me, I have uh, actually a situation about a biplay and asking for one perform this trick. The rubber bands are in the flap and the handle by the spec to begin the deck. This deck has been stacked in a side order. Uh, most magicians are familiar with them. Uh, in uh, all wrote kid was women's club hearts and spades. And that club's hearts and spades is repeated all the way through the deck. The order of the card is a each card precedes three so that First card is diamonds, and you're using clubs. This card is a club. If you go three up from, you get the four. Three to the eight, you get the four. Card will be club. If you pass that, you'll get a seven. Addition is hearts, so you would have the seven hearts. If you add three to that, you get a ten. If you go to the last, the last. Would be a spade, would be the ten of spades. Throughout the entire piece, two cards. After this, of course, would be higher. You go jack, queen, king. The next card is a king. This rotation, as far as suits are concerned, would be a diamond. Diamonds. And that is the deck. Now, five step order. The this and one of the Premier uses of a high step stack is if the pieces are cut, a complete cut. Up to the top card, you only have to do the, the bottom card. In this case, it is eight diamonds. That means the card in value will be back. X suit eight diamonds is close to the, the top card. Clubs. Now you understand. Find a way to have the spectator cut the deck, complete cut the cards back in the box without taking out the tear. Anything suspicious in the box. Examine the box. The information tells you the card he took off and placed in his pocket. I'm going to give you one little added tip. The deck can be cut as long as they are. Not destroy anything. It simply comes. So, cutting the cards repeatedly upset the balance of the stacked deck. You can just before you have the spectator. I usually begin by saying, "Sir, cut the this we in setting them up." But the cut and whatever you do, please don't drop cards. Otherwise, able to be. For hours, okay. mix them up. Now I do call nine shuffle. Top and bottom card, and then three cards, and then we're going to do the same thing again. Bottom card and one, two, four. Actually, I've moved nine cards. Now in the pack, apparently has been repeatedly. Shuffled, all bite brief. You now add that as you move approximately ten feet, you want him to give the cut there in the middle. What this is the only cards at the bottom of the deck. So by cutting somewhere in the middle, he has not disturbed anything. He's cutting into the size step setup. All I have to do is and because I him move the top card in his pocket without looking at it. I then ask him to insert the cards. It's very important you insert 
the, the gentleman is a very, very uh, uh, slot the car into the box. And then push the little flap in. Does that. Say, sir, hold the cards up in the air. Can you see through the box? He says, no. Turn the box around. See through that, sir, and the box are open. There's one safe card, sir, and he hands you the deck. Remember, you have the two hands. Say, I'm going to secure the deck. You remove the rubber band. Place it. So, it looks like it is securing the box. It has not interfered with access to the all important secret door on the other side. Find the car. There's pocket is the, the fleshy thing of the thumb right here. This portion of the thing is going to do all of the work. Press the trap just by pulling down the mirror which exposes the car on the bottom of the deck. It only takes a second for you to do that. To there is a flex of hearts. I'm holding it in my hand. I'm like this. It just takes a slight movement to get down. I'm looking at four hearts. And I say, sir, I want you to of your hand. And he does that. There's no way anything inside of cards. I have fooled magicians with the trick by doing it and doing it boldly. Of course, the four of cards tell the card in his pocket is the diamond club. Seed is the four plus seven. And now go into the out of body experience, which is shown in the presentation. And of course, when he moves from his the mystery out enjoy this is casino yeah effort effect it has been one of the most effects in programs uh, with as well, of course, lay audience. But because it involves gambling, uh, interest, and, and this particular routine, there is no way that you can predict the outcome of this particular sequence of events. At least that's how it should appear. The props that you need similar to the job, approximately. 50 casinos. I'm going to tell you at this juncture that while the last chips appear in color, mind, that every one comes from this casino. And the beginning, the germination of this event began at a large uh, show I went to in Long Beach. In into collector casino game. Was then I found out there is a collector's market for casino chips. As you know there time to discuss bidding and the chips that are wealthy. There are people who collect. As I look through the collectors, I suddenly realize that some of the major casinos. Uh, had a plethora of uh, casino chips, very accumulated over the years. And so I think some of the collector chips, some of the chips in the current, picked Harris because there were Harris seen Las Vegas, Atlantic City, and it enabled me to visit them to accumulate. This many chips all there's one other chip in there. This is what I give away. 
this comes from any, you know, the in Los Angeles, in Vegas. What I up, uh, is, and I use these giveaways during the show. This one came from the Flamingo Hill. You'll go back to the performance I used, and the used along with the Flamingo. That's the first scene of Las Vegas. Top of the other clips that you're going to need is the money that will be wagered. Money it actually is fifty-one dollars. These are which are available from magic shops. And these bills were then marked. Fifty of the bills, all bills. Next. Bills are, and here's where they are in the books adjacent, just above, about ten hundred dollars. You'll see a little numeral one that is left set press type for laminate rub down lettering and the number one right there. The next one has. Two, right there in the bush. So, so forth are marked one through fifth. On top, lighter side up, the mark side up, and on top of the one you place an unmarked bill. That is all the preparation for the bills. I then, after marking the bills, that here's the laminating foam, both sides. Bill, trim the corners, and even using a little air was no sticky glue. The reason for this, besides the fact that it led to it later, the bills to be counted easily because these things slide, they can fan, they, you cannot do that with paper. They count off very easily so that they don't stick together. I can that trick in preparation of Viking magic will be out very shortly. Human can put it together the same way I did. A complete casino royale effect uh, uh, provided by nature with everything from the gods, the chips, the giveaway chips, the thousand dollar bill, even the little holder, and the special mark. You can make up for yourself, but at any interest in this, it is a marvelous piece of music. that is all the preparation, with the exception of the deck set. I'm proud of this, I believe it is original, original and made. what I've done I have set up the so the other card is a hand value card as in blackjack. In other words, the court cards plus the tens. They are arranged. On the top, I place three. Immediately, that is a new card, a king, then a and then a ten. Odd. Ten value jack. And so forth. Right through, you will get these Places it's important should be located at the bottom, of the deck. and the reason for that is you don't want them in play later uh, as part of the hand of black. So interspersed. That is how the deck is set up. Is the value the center dot in and value card? You see, card there is right. And in the ten value card is this way you can immediately spot when you have a ten value card by that black dot. I've confused you enough. I will go begin <laughs> the actual so then it will come together and to happening. Prediction is placed in full view. It can be from the ceiling. Where do you 
So the audience is aware that no one touches on um, need this right, right out of view before anything begins. You now have Peter selected and inform him that he's going to take an imaginary trip to World Family Casino. The first thing he's going to do is the casino there. And to do that, have 40 or 50 gambling And he is going to to determine which casino he will visit. By the way, everybody here is going to Las Vegas. But when you take the one chip, the one legitimate chip from on the Flamingo Hilton, and you flip it out into the audience. As soon as he gets it, you say, Sir, what, which, uh, you know, is that? I'll say, Flamingo Hilton. I say, Sir, interesting. Flamingo was the first in Vegas, and you know who I'll say, Bugsy Siegel. Katie, of course, he played Bugsy in the movie. And then you have the selection. You take the, uh, you shut up. Because it makes fifths from different casinos. You pick out one, you say this one is from the Desert Inn, Taj Mahal, over 40 casinos, and you have it to the and say, Sir, I sure hold the, the goblin and shake them up well. And this is important. You say, Close your eyes. I don't influence yourself. Anyway, reach, dig, dig, like move on one of the chips, place it in your you the goblet and put it to the side. So we now have Hammer's hotel force. That is step number one. The spectator has no okay. the, the next thing you say, sir, we have to decide is how going to wager at that casino and you remember say I have fifty thousand dollars here and I'm going to ask you to determine that. I'll hold this this little I want you to cut off as many bills as you can and seal them in an envelope. Who does that behind your back and these bills are in an envelope and sealed. Very simple, looking at the tray next to the deck on the table. Sir, place your inside coat. Now has the casino chip in one pocket. He has an unknown amount of money in his pocket. You see that only leaves the game to be played. Now, as you reach over, grab the deck of cards. Glance down at the top card and get case the number 20. Or believe it or not, $1,000 envelope, even though the spectator doesn't even know that. Number 20, that you saw on the top. Take the cards and remove them as you can do on. You're going to, because I want you to deal with the hand yourself the card and tell him to hold it in the dealing position. You hold your hand. Say, so I want you to begin dealing cards face time to the Do that. Make sure he goes past the top and seven cards stacked to deal with. Every other card has a 10 value. He continues going and stop at any time that you wish and they'll generally stop somewhere Card on the table. There's a white dot. You don't want the one. You want the next one, which will automatically be a ten. And you can see by the white dot that is a ten value. And you ask him down at a card. You notice approximate the look blackjack hand. First being dealt face down. You then want him to be dealing the ten. And as he does so, the odd card ten never done. Remember, you have once mentioned blackjack, so he really doesn't even know what you're doing. So he deals 
the cards, and whenever he feels like stopping, he stops. It is a value.